Earlier this month, the U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and the Philippines President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. made a joint announcement that the Philippines will give access, the U.S. access to four more military bases. So tonight, our chief foreign correspondent Helena Cheng is here with more. Thank you, Crispin. So as of today, the U.S. has access to a total of nine bases throughout the Philippines, according to the ATCA agreement. The South China Sea is geopolitically significant to the Indo-Pacific region. One of the new U.S. military bases is only a few hundred miles away from Taiwan, not to mention that the waters near the Philippines off the west coast are lush with seafloor and ideal for stealthy submarine operations. This access to the bases will give the U.S. a beneficial position in responding to the conflicts with China and the Philippines can also benefit from the infrastructure upgrade. After the announcement, China's foreign ministry spokesperson Mao Ning quickly responded that these moves will escalate tensions and endanger peace and stability in the region. This move also remained controversial among some Philippine people. Last weekend, a group of protesters gathered in the Times Square with banners and signs to urge the U.S. to stop its military expansion, worrying it will hurt their country's sovereignty. But what is worth looking into is the 180-degree turn in the Philippines' diplomatic policies under its current president, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. U.S.-Philippine relations have soured during the six years' turn under its former president, Rodrigo Duterte. I spoke with Lucas Myers, who is the coordinator of the Wilson Center's Asia's program, for this perspective. I would say that most uh, Southeast Asian countries understand the security risk that China's rise brings. Uh, you know, the South China Sea obviously is the most pertinent issue for the Philippines, but there are other risks of, you know, say Chinese uh, dominance in the region. They're aware of this. At the same time, they pursue a balanced approach because they don't want to anger China unnecessarily, uh, particularly because they are dependent upon China economically. And so they attempt to sort of walk a fine line. And so I think perhaps in Marcos's uh, foreign policy approach, you can see it as this is a correction from Duterte being too favorable towards China. And this is us attempting to balance back towards the United States to achieve a more favorable uh, pro-Philippines middle ground. Um, and, and it's also significant that his that he visited China first. Right. I mean, he was attempting to sort of go and, and, and reach out to Xi Jinping and reassure the Beijing uh, government that this is that the, the Philippines still values China, and this is not an abandonment of China for the United States. It's, it's, it's much more balanced than that. With the recent disputes over the balloons and China's rising presence in the South China Sea region, there are concerns that increasing political and military tensions will affect other Southeast Asia countries and spill over onto the global stage. We will continue to monitor this story.